What is up y'all, Scott here. Today we're just doing a quick video to talk about how the Ronin S can be linked to a remote control. This is a question I received from a lot of folks in regards to the cable cam videos I've been doing, so I thought I'd put this quick one together just to show you how it's done. First, you'll need a remote control. So this is for remote control airplanes. The particular remote that I'm using is the FlySky i6S. There are lots of different controllers. This is just one of the cheaper ones that seems like it could do the job. It comes with the receiver as well that connects to the gimbal. And you're looking at about a hundred bucks to get this thing all dialed in and going. I will put the link to this one down in the description below if you're looking to purchase this exact controller. You're gonna need some breadboard cables. So that's what these are here. These are really cheap. You can get a pack for 10 bucks or something. You get a whole bunch of them. They need to be female on both ends the Ronin S as well as the receiver for the controller will need the female adapter. Uh, you will need the piece that comes with the Ronin S. So this is the multi-cable control. This connects your camera to the Ronin S and will allow you to trigger recording from the remote when you have this connected. Once you have all these parts, uh, first thing is figuring out how to properly wire up the receiver to connect it into the Ronin. You have a positive and a negative power input coming out of the receiver that will connect to the Ronin, as well as the signal coming out of the receiver uh, that goes into the Ronin. Everything is going to connect to the focus control wheel on the Ronin S. You'll have to make sure it's set to S bus on the switch. And then on the bottom, you'll notice there's a little flap you can open up, and that is where the pins are to connect the receiver to the the gimbal. So I've already got this rigged up properly. I've put a little blank um, piece of breadboard cable connector in here so that I've, and I've been able to tape this whole thing together. So I can just go in here and plug this in as a unit. Once you have the gimbal turned on and connected, you'll see a little red light blinking on the receiver indicating that you are getting power. From here, I just put a couple Velcro strips on this that connect to the side of the gimbal. From there, you need to go to your controller. You turn the controller on and on the main screen, you'll see a wrench here. Click on the wrench. You'll go to system and you'll select RX bind and it will automatically connect to this with the little binding tab that is on the receiver. You can remove that after connecting or just leave it on there. It's, it's a pretty firm fit, but that binding loop is what makes it so that the controller knows what to connect to. Once we are linked up, you're immediately going to get control. So you see here, it's already moving. By default, the channel one and channel two that the remote sends to the gimbal are going to control the pan and the tilt, which is great, makes it super simple. From here, we need to jump into the app. So make sure you have that downloaded on your phone. And once you're all connected up, you go into the user profiles and you're going to need to select which of the three profiles you want to have as sort of your cable cam setup. I've just chosen profile two. And I jump down here to control and you'll have this screen of different settings that you can link to different channels on the remote control. And what you'll see is when you move the actual controller, you'll see some things changing on the screen. And this is how you can figure out what buttons and dials do what. By default, as I said, the channel one and channel two will be set to pan and tilt. For some reason, if you wanted to change those, you can click there and choose a different axis. I've chosen to reverse my channel one for the tilt motor because I find it's easier, it makes more sense to me, but whatever makes sense to you. Now, the only other one of these that I needed to adjust was the photo record option, and I wanted that to be set to channel four. And so you need to go into your settings on the actual controller for this, and you go to function, and then you need to scroll down until you find auxiliary channels. Then you have to choose which switch you actually want to use for starting recording on the camera. It's a little bit odd here on the phone, it says channel four, but on the receiver, I had to use channel five to make this connection work. It just requires a little bit of trial and error with your device, figuring out which one does what. And then you click this here and choose what type of channel you want. And all of these things are labeled on the controller. So I chose the SW, and then I chose, I click here and I chose SWB, which is this controller here. The reason for that is you, the, the way it actually triggers the recording is you have to start it with it in the center and then it's a very fast click to the top and back to the middle to start recording. It's not a click and leave it. You just sort of click up and back down and that will send a signal to the camera that it's time to start recording. It's a little bit fussy. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly, but for the most part, this functionality has been fine on all my shoots. Once you've got all that set up, you can go over to the motion section and you can also control the speed, the dead band and the smoothness of all these axes. I chose to go with medium for these and then smoothness set to high for my pan. And then my tilt, I have the dead band 
set to low. And then you can also adjust your endpoints on these so that it will stop moving in a, that direction at a certain point. And I ended up using this for my tilt motor specifically because when I have my wireless transmission set up on this for monitoring, there are some angles that it will run into the gimbal if I have allow it to rotate too far. And so I basically just found what those points were, set them in, in the app here, and then it isn't allowed to rotate beyond that. So I keep my gear protected. And that's all there is to it. Once you've got that set, you're good to go. And when I go out to set up my cable cam, all I have to do is plug in the receiver, turn on the transmitter, run the gimbal, and we're good to go. Make sure I'm in profile too and everything's happy. So it's a pretty simple setup once you've worked through the, the quirks of getting the system dialed in. I had to spend a couple hours just trying different channels and things like that. The one thing I was not able to get working, which is really unfortunate, is the focus control. You know, I'm able to get focus through the, the dial here on the gimbal itself, but I was not able to link that up to anything on the controller and have that information be sent over. That would be a pretty ideal situation, but not the end of the world. In most cases, the action is happening so fast that doing any sort of follow focus isn't really feasible from the same controller that is uh, directing the camera. So haven't worried about it too much and it's, it's all been fine. So I hope that is helpful to y'all. Um, if you have any other questions, drop them down in the comments below. Hit me up on Instagram if you need to chat through anything. I'd love to get you guys going on this setup. It's, it's a really cheap way to have a remote control gimbal that gives you a lot of range, a lot more range than you can get with the Ronin S app or with the PlayStation controller method that some people are using. So if you're doing a cable cam setup, this is the way to go in my opinion. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, get out there, make something beautiful, and I will see you all soon. Peace.